no matter how good you look, most of us think, especially me, you know, I could look a whole lot better. Oh, please. How can you oh. improve on this? Please. There's nothing like years of teasing, I oh, yeah, or a bitter breakup to make us determine. No, the teasing. The teasing. <laughs> or a bitter school. breakup is it to make us determined to change for sweet revenge. Perhaps. Yeah, revenge. <laughs> Take, for example, some of our favorite celebrities who suffered sour splits from their Hollywood hubbies. Gals like Jessica Simpson, who changed her hair color and plumped those lips after she and Nick Lachey were no longer a pair. And Reese Witherspoon dropped a whole lot of weight, as well as ex-spouse Ryan Phillippe, to take on a hot new image and a kind of look-at-me-now-baby revenge. But the one person who tops them all has to be Heidi Montag. Heidi, one of the stars of MTV's reality show, The Hills, easily outdistanced the competition by what Us Magazine trumpeted as revenge plastic surgery. Montag, a 21-year-old aspiring singer, had her breasts enlarged from a 32A to a 32C and also had a nose job done in early April. She proudly told the magazine the reason for undergoing the double procedure was, quote, People would say you have such a big nose and they'd make fun of me for being so flat and say mean boy things like if you nail two nails on a board, they would be bigger than you are. I was tormented. Heidi maintains she couldn't be happier with her new look and neither could boyfriend Spencer Pratt. Here to share their own stories of revenge plastic surgery are Melinda Farina, who had the last slap after ah, ah. getting her nose done. <laughs> to get even. Mm -hmm. and also with us is plastic surgeon right there. That guy did alley surgery, Dr. Stephen Davis. And psychologist Dr. Debbie Maggage joins us once again. Good to see you, Deb. Uh, Melinda. Hello. They called you Gonzo. Yes, it was horrible. How bad was it? Horrible, horrible. <laughs> well, I was, I was saying that my story started from the delivery room. That's what you used to look like? That's it. Right there? Yes. yes, there it is. Mike! <laughs> well, I'm people at home, that's the before. Yeah, that is. In the delivery room, where they have in a hard time. the delivery room, when the head was coming out, my father said, it's a nose. Oh. <laughs> Didn't your family so, call you yeah. the nose? Well, no, it was known as the nose in the family. So um, oh. everyone, you know, had its own title. Do they not know that it came wow. from them? They do know. They all got rid of it. No one has the nose anymore. It's gone. It's well, gone. The doctor yeah. in the delivery room. I'm going to need forceps here. We're having a hard time. We've got a nose yes. coming out. Yes, jaws of life. Get oh, the and, nose out. And Big Bird, what are other names did, in high school? How bad did it get? Well, I, I think, you know, it started just progressing from elementary school to junior high school. Junior high school was probably the worst mm. because you have these young boys, you know, they're already nervous because they're trying to flirt with the girls mm -hmm. and, you know, so they're trying to hide their own insecurities by poking fun at everybody. Everybody, so big nose, big bird, whatever it was. So it finally just got to you, and you, one day you said, "Hey, I'm old enough. I'm gonna go get it taken care of." Yes, and I found a phenomenal plastic surgeon, uh, Dr. Sam Risk, who's actually been on the show before. Oh yeah, I know Dr. Sure. Risk. Yeah, and he um, he became a very good friend of mine, and I've referred about 50 <laughs> patients to him. How good of a friend! <laughs> oh, it's such a such a. What else has he done to you? <laughs> He's well, he is one of the best in the world, he, no question about it. So you have to land with a really good guy, I really, and he did a great job. I was job. so fortunate. I was so fortunate. Um, and I actually, from having the surgery done, brought such a self-esteem over me that, that it was a confidence that I was able to go into the professional world and kind of like get out there and start a consulting company for myself. Because you feel myself. better about yourself. But are you feeling right. better about yourself because you look good or because you're able to finally look at those girls in junior high and go, ha, ha, ha? Right. I think, you know, it's or because... Or I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. I actually ran into a couple of the girls who would, you know, pass comments and they asked for my surgeon's card. Oh, <laughs> oh really? Yeah, so, that is sweet. Yeah. Well, you know, some creepy guys used to say to her, her friends, you know, she's hot, but if she just had her nose done, she'd be even hotter. But you were right. hot before. Come uh, on. Ah, thanks. You're very attractive. Yeah. Allie, let's get into your story quickly here. Uh, you were always athletic. Always. I was always into dance, cheerleading, soccer. I was always very thin. And then I got Lyme disease a couple, like six years back, but they didn't catch it right away. So I had to go on a lot of medicine, and all the medicine made me gain a ton of weight. Mm -hmm. I gained maybe like an extra 30 pounds. And it was really upsetting because everyone teased me about it, especially in dance. You know, you can't be a fat dancer. <laughs> it's just not right. And you can't jump high if you're fat, you know. So if people are telling you you're big and you believe it, your self-esteem just went way down. 
So did you stop going to dance classes? And I things? did for really? a while. I even stopped going to school for a little bit. I had to be homeschooled because the teasing was kind of bad. Well, you can get them back by getting some liposuction, yes. right? Yes, and now yeah, I feel sister. great. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you did? Yeah. I got lipo, and I've been so much happier. My self-esteem went way up. I'm Do back in dance. I'm teaching dance now, actually. Doctor, how many people do you think uh, out of 10 come in and say, this is because I was teased? You know, if you're really being honest about it, I would say it's very, very close to all 10. What? Because, you know what, if you really date back into their psyche, and, you know, as a good doctor, hopefully you really are evaluating your patients, sitting down and talking with them about everything, and you really get back into high school and things like that where things really bothered them. Mm -hmm. And they may not have addressed it for years. We have guys that come in that are very successful businessmen that just for years they've always been concerned about they had like a female appearance to their chest. And they'll always wear like a shirt at the beach or something like that. And finally they decided I'm going to go do something about it. Or we have women that just, you know, for, for years didn't participate in certain athletic activities because maybe they felt that they were too big chested. Dr. Debbie, though, I mean, we always hear you're supposed to be happy on the inside and then you go get plastic surgery. But come on, that never happens. Yeah. It doesn't really. <laughs> I'm going to be quite honest. There is a continuum. I mean, the stories that you're telling today don't sound over the continuum of not a healthy thing. You know, sometimes you have a part of your body that is bothersome to you and it, people will make fun of it. And so it's okay to go and fix one thing if that really makes you feel better. The problem is when you're talking about this topic of revenge plastic mm -hmm. surgery, pe most people go on the other side of the continuum. You know, they get the one thing fixed. Their self-esteem is low. They get that moment of satisfaction. Look, look, see how good I look. And then they're empty again. And then they go for the next procedure because then they're looking for something yeah. else that's not good enough on them. Did you, so, did you experience that? Well, I experience it now with patients who come to me. And what, what do you do now? I have a consulting company, so I consult a cosmetic consultant for patients who come to me with their insecurities, and then I have to point them in the right direction, mm -hmm. you know, point them to my cosmetic dentist teeth. It's a huge, huge thing. People can't communicate. That's true. I have to tell you, I used to have, uh, I knocked my tooth out when I was a little kid, and I got the bonding, and it, over the years, it kind of became yellowish, and I would, even up until a few years ago, I would kind of smile like that, and I got, I did, I got oh, the veneer. Yeah. See, they're yeah. veneer. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 yeah, I, I smiled, and it did, I, doctor, I know you hate this, but it no. did change. I felt like I could smile and... No, it, but you see, I agree with you. I think that's okay. If there's something that really bothers you, I think it can enhance. But the thing, the problem is, the problem is for many, many people, and the plastic surgeon could probably attest to this, it doesn't stop with the one thing or the two things. And then a few years later, well, I'm unhappy with this, and then I'm happy with but this, think, and that's a bigger think, problem. But I think that really is incumbent upon the physician to really engage with the patient, to really determine what their motivation is, yes. and really sit down and say, okay, look, we're going to do this. And if you really sit down and talk it sure. over with them, that should be a healthy way How of addressing it. How many times do you it. turn away patients? A lot. Do you? Oh, yeah. Just a lot immature, of times. immature, not ready for it? N immaturity, maybe someone's someone else is telling them to get this oh. surgery and they really after talking with them for a given amount of time you realize they're really scared about Would that being surgery. men asking girlfriends oh, to get enhanced is that that happen boy, boy, boy look at you <laughs> you got that's it that's, that's yeah. it see look at I know. you I you know what we're friends. talking about <laughs> and I have to say I, true. I commend you <laughs> and that you that you practice this way but I work with way too many people where if they want the surgery and they can pay for the surgery they get the surgery and so yeah. you're an exception to the rule I believe out there and I think that I, I agree with you doctor yeah. I think, uh, these two are exceptions yeah I, I don't think that they're over the continuum of unhealthy but there are just so many cases that are yeah. and it's really a big issue but we could even go into something else like uh, people that are going to class reunions high school reunions oh, that want to have things done. it doesn't Saturday. necessarily have oh. to be major surgeries what it can, can we do in two things. days class <laughs> 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 reunion you oh, see? Right. We don't need anything right, like gosh come on it's gonna be great uh -huh. uh, thank you all for being here. You look great. You look great. Thanks for joining us. And let us know what you think about revenge, plastic surgery. Log on to our website, mdjshow.com. I just get out of here. That's okay. <laughs> We're going to be back in 90 seconds. I'll never walk.